Sir, you can still date the girl. In fact, she might like you more if you're making more money, but I guess that's a lesson you'll learn later. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, KGKXXChic, and we are back with another reaction to The Flash. We're now into episode 10, which is called Reckless. So in the last episode, we had Iris go to Coast City to follow up on a lead that she heard about a new meta who was able to walk through solid objects. She was able to basically get to the bottom of that. But at the end of it all, she decided it was best that she stay in Coast City because because back in Central City, Barry and his team discovered that there is a new type of meta out there that doesn't seem to be a person, but actually some sort of conscious living flame that can consume things, but is drawn to grief. So because they're not sure how this thing works or what it's attracted to or what it goes after, Barry thought it'd be better for Iris to stay in Coast City until they figure out how to get this thing. And right at the end of the episode, we saw that the Steel Force showed up and he didn't look happy, basically letting Iris know that he they figured out potentially what's been going on with her, but it's not good news. So we're going to find out what said news is and whether or not it's a really as bad as it seems or if it's going to turn into a Barry needs to fix this before the end of the world situation. So we're going to jump into this episode. But before we do, if this is your first time to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. If you like this video, I'd appreciate it so much if you gave the like button some love. It just helps out with the algorithm, which gets me seen. And that means a lot to me. So if it's in your heart to do, I'd appreciate it. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, would love it if you would join the fam. We're on a march to 10K. We're getting closer every day and I'd love you to be part of that journey. And the same goes for those of you who keep coming back. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. Same goes for you. Please like, subscribe, comment, all those good things if it's in your heart to do. All right, that out of the way, guys, let's get into episode 10 right about now. Dion, what's happening to me? Yeah. Temple mutations I've been tracking. Mm-hmm. It turns out every one of them leads to you. There's something about you that's causing time to fracture around you. Oh, she's that virus, girl. This isn't a virus that you have. You are the virus. You need to tell Barry. What is it? Oh, he came so fast. Where do I start? <laughs> As usual, something's happening with me. We just never get to have a peaceful season where I just get to chill and be pregnant or nothing. It's fine. Well, who knows what's next? Well, we have to find a cure. And we will. Clearly. I'm sorry, but you gotta stay put. Well, I mean, there are worse places to hang out. Right? Queens do deserve thrones. She's been through so much. I love the way that Dion looked at Barry first. Like, please don't hurt me. What you said about that black fire. There are people that are still in danger. You have to stop it. But I can't just. Yeah, he's you like, you're my number one priority, ma'am. Just call me if you need anything. I will. Okay. No, why? Why do they do this to West Allen every season? Such a woman thing to do, though. Never mind my suffering and pain. You go on. I'm just gonna lay here for days. Oh, you didn't like that painting, did you? <laughs> oh, it burned you. It said, "How dare you try to ice me last time?" Barry, are you sure you don't want to? I mean, Team Flash can hold like, on. Like I want to. She won't let me. Kramer pulled files for every suspicious fire-related crime since the particle accelerator exploded, so me and Cecile have to go through all of it. And there's a ton. Shouldn't Barry do it since he can do it in like 30 seconds? But I guess they need to find something to do other than take care of their daughter, Jenna, because where is she? Ross, um, if it's okay, I'd like to search your apartment top to bottom, see if there's any clues as to why the fire's targeting you. Can you go give me it. two seconds? I just have a few bodies I need to hide. I want you to help me catch this thing using me as bait. Shouldn't you talk to Team Flash about this? Just saying, the whole going rogue thing doesn't really go well for folks in this team, ever. So the key to catching it is to wait until it comes after again and then trap it. Frost, we're not using you as bait. Look, come on. It's the least that she can do. She's taken a lot of lives herself. 
If we could build some kind of fusion containment housing. Then all we'd need to do is recalibrate the unit to absorb an amplify frost Ooh, crowd Talk nerdy to me! Barry, whatever this thing is, it's coming after me no matter what. So I'm not gonna sit around and do nothing when we have a plan to fight back. She literally has no facts that are not facts. I finished fine tuning the sphere to amplify a cross cryokinetic signature. Make sure. I like the way they were using the props this season. Ability of a reconfiguration flip at the subatomic level already done. Really? She's like, would you like a job at Tannhauser? There's a job waiting for you at Tannhauser Labs. Told you. I pay better. Truth. And you wouldn't be in danger of dying weekly. I mean, I mean, nah. I actually kind of like it here. Sure. Sir, you can still date the girl. In fact, she might like you more if you're making more money, but I guess that's a lesson you'll learn later. I mean, even Allegra has another job outside of Team Flash, but okay. Chester's got some serious PTSD about this thing, man. Come closer. Closer still. If only there was a way to make Frost more attractive to the flames. <laughs> I love this. How do we make you better bait? This is a great idea. <laughs> I'm really liking her. It turns out there's a no contact rule in play. Oh. Uh, wait, you mean someone doesn't want me to find my own birth mother? Like your birth mother. I got this. Hi. But also Uncle that's not Roy. okay. Like people yes, have to understand so. when it comes to adoption yeah, that I'm parents who, um, say that they don't want to be contacted that's their right it's 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 kind of cold it's kind of mean but it's it is their legal right and some some adoptive parents are some some parents who give up their babies do not want to be contacted like they literally don't uh, no problem thank you you see how money just overrides laws <gasps> Iris, did you do that? You did, didn't you? She probably shouldn't be holding the drive either. And it got so bad that when I finally had the chance to reconcile with my mom, I almost lost the opportunity. These are not parallel stories, though. I told her I was scared. I told her I was angry. And also that I loved her, even though I didn't know why. That's all fair. But your mom wanted to talk to you again, Iris. That's different. And you, mom, seriously, how could you go along with this? It was a cool plan. You used your child as bait for a monster. <laughs> that's, that's not how I see it. No, you don't. Because you're looking at Frost as a science experiment instead of as your daughter. Okay. Because right now you have two daughters. But if something happens to Frost because of something you helped her with, you'll have none. Ooh. Haven't y'all been estranged for like ever? Anyway, bye, Caitlin. I can't make the decision for you. But. But I can tell you this. Sometimes the hardest part about being a leader is letting go. Exactly. Letting your people do what it is they're supposed to do. But I'm unique. No one has cryo powers like me. You sure? I do. Right? You forgot. If the two of you work together, the fire won't hesitate. And then we can trap it. And that will keep everyone safe. Why couldn't you have come to this conclusion like two guilt trips ago? For a while now. Turns out it runs in the family. Can't believe you didn't tell us there's two ice So what you're saying is that family. Caitlin's parents were related before they got married. Mm. Okay, focus on your powers. Like this. That Just by lighting your eyes up? That needs more instructions. Well, apparently not. Feels strange. It means you're doing it right. Is it? Or is she turning evil? God, how much of this fire exists? Che! Of course. Can y'all ever make anything that does what it's supposed to? Hold her hand or something, Frost. Y'all just need to like. Y'all, you're acting like you couldn't just resuscitate her. There's a doctor on standby, defibrillators, a whole medical lab. Y'all just too weak. Weak in the knees. Stand up. 
You found anything that can help us in Captain Kramer's files? I wish. I wish. Almost threw them all and still nothing. Are you all even looking at those files or are you just making out? Who's asking? Your daughter. Slam the door. Look, I'm sure you have so many questions. Just one. Why did you give me up? Crap life of mine that came after was the hope that you were living a good life. Ah, oh, just committing petty crime. No, I'm not. Great. I needed you. I needed my mother. Well, it doesn't make her feel better. Yeah, I... Iris. It's like, can you not interrupt our moment? Okay. Don't touch me. Uh-oh. Mom's like, you brought the devil into my house. This is why I gave you. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was me. What the hell? Oh, Iris, what did you do? Oh, no. What did you do to my mom? Yikes. Yeah, there's no backstepping out of this one, Iris. This is why you should have stayed put. I'm sorry, sis. But that one's on you. And I hate saying it because I love you. What do you want with me? Too far. There is no normal life for us. Oh my god. Robbie? The world's different now. Ronnie. One of those names. Ronnie? He's trying to get you the same way it got Chester P. Don't fall for it, Kate. Ronnie dead dead. Or is he? Alright, guys, that was episode uh 10, which was called Reckless. And yes, it definitely focused on the fact that Frost was being a little bit reckless with her life as far as, you know, always putting it at risk for the cause, so to speak. And while her reasoning behind it was altruistic and very heroic, like the team said, her life is still has value and she should be prioritizing her safety. I mean, even people who are in hero type industries like firemen and police officers and military personnel, like they are taught to protect themselves too. I mean, it still is a fairly selfless job and many of those folks do usually end up getting hurt. But ideally, you don't throw yourself recklessly uh, I see what I did there, or willy nilly into a situation where you might get hurt. You definitely want to try to be more, you know, you want to be self preservationist as well as being someone who takes care of others. And so we, yeah, a lot of this episode was around the 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 family drama in in Caitlyn's world, uh, the Snow family drama. Um, you know, those of you who've watched this for a long time, you know that that's really not a big priority for me. Like, I just feel like the whole Snow thing has been like grossly born up. Like, I don't know. I just feel. I don't know. I just feel like the whole thing around Caitlyn and Frost and all this stuff is just a little extraneous. Like, I just don't see how it's contributing to our overall plot. I mean, I suppose it's supposed to give Caitlyn a bit of development, but this wasn't even about Caitlyn. So it's weird. I Like I said, I, I, I've i already ranted at length about my issues around the whole Caitlyn Frost, you know, killer Frost situation. I, I still don't agree with the way it was handled, but it is what it is. And this is a way, I guess, to make sure that there is some development out of those two characters that were created out of that arc. Um, we really didn't learn anything more about this new fire meta outside of the fact that apparently it needs to feed on cold fusion. I thought it kind of was generating its own thing, but apparently it, it needs some sort of power source, I guess. So that could be useful to them to some degree. I can't think that there's many cold fusion sources in Central City or even in the world generally, but, and also this thing seems to be sitting around Central City, which is interesting. You'd think it would just kind of go anywhere it wanted, but since it's contained to the city, then that's probably something else that Team Flash should be looking at as well. But we didn't really get much else out of that. So I feel like the story for the flame is still very much in progress. And like I said, by the end of the episode, they're like, we should find another way to trap it. I'm like, we could have done this before, but I get it. The whole point was to get us through that whole arc around Frost being a little less reckless and a little bit more careful with her life and, and considerate of the people around her that are affected by her life. And then outside of that, we had, of course, what happened with Iris. We heard that she is the source of the time sickness or the source of the issues happening in the timeline. They still don't know exactly why. And of course, Dion's like, we're going to try to figure it out, see what we can do to fix it. But in the meantime, Iris, we need you to like stay in one place because you moving around is affecting timelines and affecting the reality. But of course, Iris was like, nah, it's fine. What's the worst that could happen? Well, now we found out. <laughs> 
we found out the worst that could happen is she could make a whole person disappear. So that's not great. Obviously, she didn't mean it. But like I said in the episode, like, you know, I love my girl Iris, but unfortunately, this one is on her. She was told to kind of keep her radius and her contact minimal while they're figuring this out. And now she's going to understand just how dangerous it all is. Now, again, I know that she thought that Dion had given her a fix that was going to kind of hold her over. But I don't know. I feel like she should have just kind of taken that advice to heart where she could have just stayed. Like she said, she's in a luxury hotel, taken care of, free of charge. Like she could have just found a way to chill out and work on other things. But the fact that she kind of wanted to go out and act like everything was fine when it clearly isn't. Yeah, this is a hard lesson for her to learn. I'm just hoping that whatever happened is going to be reversible. I'm fairly certain it is. But that was kind of, like I said, a rough a lo lesson for her because it looks like she isn't even aware of what happened in that moment. So it's serious. Whatever's going down with her is very serious and we need to figure out what it is sooner than later because obviously it's very dangerous now for her to even be around people if she can accidentally make them disappear. And then, of course, that kind of coincides with the storyline with the, with the uh, meta from last week. We found out last week that her whole justification for what she was doing was that she was trying to find her birth mom. So Iris said she would help her do that. And then we kind of went through, you know, Iris using her poll as a reporter. And then by extension, um, what's her name? Um, and then um, the other chick using her being the fact that she's a billionaire uh, to override legal precedents to get the information necessary to get this girl to her birth mother. And like, I know this is for the sake of the show and a lot of it had to be kind of like, hyperbolized, but I just, I think it should be said that in real life, closed adoptions are that way for a reason. Like it's legally a thing that happens because the birth parent or parents, they don't want to be contacted. Like they, they have made a decision to not be in contact with their child. And she was also old enough because if she is the mother giving up and signing away the rights to her child, it would have also been her decision whether or not she wanted that child to be open to contact her later. Now, I will agree to some degree that a 16-year-old making that big of a decision is not necessarily... Again, of course, and for the sake of this story, they made it very nice and made it like, oh, so, you know, she really did want to keep her and she really didn't want to talk to her or keep that avenue open, et cetera, et cetera. But there is a very real possibility that could have happened that her mother didn't want to be contacted, that her mother really did not want to revisit that part of her life. Like, anyway, that's messy. I could get into a very deep philosophical discussion around that. But the point is, I just think it should be said that even though this was for the sake of dramatics in the show, this could have gone really, really poorly if this was real life, right? You don't want to ignore when someone says no contact in a situation like that. So anyway, now we know that unfortunately there's going to be some issues because Iris made this woman disappear right after that poor girl finally found her again. So we'll have to see how that goes for her in the next episode. I can't think that uh, what's her name, Tinya, is going to be very happy about it. So that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and we will see you in the next video.